that's it for the for the animation. But now I want to have the text pop up when the ball hits the ground the first time. So hit the ground and have it pop up. So like right here, frame this frame 18 frame 20 yeah frame 20 i'm going to select this transform holding the control key and now we have transform 2 and transform 1 in the keyframes view it's going to click here and i can drag it around so i can have it start popping up around frame 19 and now we got that hits the ground and the text pops up boom and we got our basic animation done so let's let's clean this up a little bit, right? I'm gonna use a pipe router, do that. Let's bring this down a little, and another one right here. Let's bring this down. Just spring these in, tighten things up a little bit. And now let's say I wanted to decrease the size of all this, because you can see the ball it's off screen. I want to have the ball on screen and have it bounce not in the center but at the bottom of the frame a bit more. So. We can go about this a few different ways. In After Effects, you would have to pre-comp the text animation because you can't change this value anymore. It's going to affect the animation. You'd have to pre-comp all of this, and then you can move the pre-comp around, right? Or you can make a null, parent it to the null, and then move the null around. In Fusion, since it's node-based, I can simply add another transform, and now I can move this down, I can scale it, and I can have it at the bottom. Now you're going to be thinking like this creates another issue. How, how am I going to shrink the ball, right? I could copy this and paste it here. It does the same for the ball, right? The ball is now down. But what if I want to do this to both of them at the same time? Well, there are a few ways that I can go about that. Let's delete this transform. I'm going to let's copy this again. I'm going to hit Control Shift V. And that creates an instance. You can see the green line that links them together. If I right click and paste instance, it's the same thing. See the line that links them. And I can hold the shift key, put it here. And now if I transform any of these, the whole thing transforms. I can rotate, etc., and everything will follow along. That's one way to do it, right? But if I want to do it a different way, I can actually grab this and break it off. Hold shift, could break this off. And I can then, oh wait, let's merge it after. We don't want to have the transform affecting it. And now the circle is above the text. I hit control T to flip these, these inputs. And now I can add a transform here. And this transform will transform them both. Like anyway, it's fine. It all depends on what you're doing. What I'm showing you that you can you can really do things however you want when it comes to fusion. Another way that this can be done is I could take I could take this, place it back here. I could merge the ball over this thing and then take this entire thing and I put it over here and then merge these above it. So now it's the exact same thing as before. We have the ball as the background, the text is merged above it, and then everything is merged above this blue background. So there are many ways you can go about this. Or if I want to keep the merge right here, I could disconnect this. Let's add a new background. Let's make it transparent, ensure it's black. The alpha is zero. And now we have this black background. The ball is merged above it. Then the text is merged above the ball and the background. And now, I can drag this over here and merge it all above the blue background. So exact same outcome, but a different approach. It all depends on what you're doing, right? So, but I'm going to keep it like this just for, for the sake of the tutorial. I'm going to add the transform right here and I'm going to shrink it down, bring it to the bottom of the screen, like right here. And I want the text down just a little bit lower. See, the ground for the ball is right here. I could add a transform, or you can use the merge, which actually doubles as a transform. It just doesn't have all the transform, the properties. Like it doesn't have a pivot, for example. But you can use it to do basic location, scale, rotation, and flipping. I can flip this text, for example. So here you go, boom. And that's a bad spot for a text. I just realized that's 
do it like this. I want to have this text, instead of scaling from the center, I want to have it scale from the bottom. So let's have a look at transform one. Let's put that in the viewer. We can see the pivot is right here, dead center. It scales up from the center, right? Let's go after our last keyframe and I'm going to bring the pivot down. You can actually drag it around right here, but you, you will need to move it here first. It's going to be behind the the transform control. So I'm going to place it like right here below the text. And now the text scales up from the bottom. So it's very flexible. All right. Let's say you didn't want to, you didn't want to do it like this. Let's reset the pivot, right? So it scales from the center. I could actually add a transform before the text. And then if I select transform one and I select, um, I could move transform two, like upwards like that. If I select transform one, transform two, and I can mouse over these and see which is which. This is transform four. I can use this to bring the text up. It's physically moving it, but now it's gonna be scaling from the bottom since the pivot is is now lower. The pivot didn't move, but the text moved, right? So the possibilities are pretty much um, endless when you're working with the, the nodes. So like before, I just wanna move the pivot back down, let's end the animation, ensure at the right spot. There we go. And now, boom, pops up. And if we look back at our last merge, you can see, boom, hits the ground and it bounces up and it bounces a few times, comes to a stop. Now, motion blur, how do we add this? You can do it on a per node basis, like the transform, if I come here and I go to settings, I can tick motion blur, and now we have motion blur on the scale. I can increase the quality, which increases the steps, so it makes it look like instead of, you can see the individual stepping, it smooths it out. By default, it goes up to 10, but you can type in your custom value here. Like you can type in 15, for example, if you need something smoother. But just know that the higher it is, the more the more processing power it's gonna to take to render it out. So in this case, by the time it reaches six, I think it's fine, because it's not moving too quickly. Maybe, yeah, maybe like seven or eight. So seven, eight, I think that's fine. Maybe like eight is fine in this case. There's also the shutter angle, which is 180 by default, which is for natural motion blur, like on real life cameras. You can increase it to 360, or again, you can type your own value, like 9999, which is kind of ridiculous, but let's reset that, so double click, and reset that to, to 180. Now we have motion blur on the text, and this, this gets pretty annoying if you're going to be enabling motion blur for every node, so let's disable it here. If you want to have it on the text and the circle, what we can do is use this last transform, or if you want to have just a dedicated node for motion blur, let's throw a transform node down and let's just call it um, XF for transform and MB for motion blur. Hit settings and turn motion blur on. And now everything that's processed before this will have motion blur. So we can see our text has motion blur and our red circle has motion blur, All right? So let's play our animation and motion blur is pretty heavy. So you might get some stuttering until it, it puts everything in RAM. But again, if you wanna speed things up, like for, in my case, I have these controls here. I can turn off high quality, turn on proxy. You can right click here, do the same thing. And I'm gonna set playback to a quarter. And that decreases the resolution, but I have motion blur still on. And now I should get some faster playback. But motion blur is pretty heavy in Resolve. So I usually just turn it on to see what it looks like. Then I turn it off from right here or by right clicking and turning off motion blur. And I keep it off until I'm ready to, to render. Well, this doesn't affect your rendering, but I just turn it off for the, for the, the viewing purposes, right? Because it's, it's quite heavy for some reason. So that's our, our animation. That last bounce looks weird. I'm just noticing, um, let's increase the height and we slow it down a little. Yeah, I think that's fine. Maybe you can 
do its turn off x. This x is getting in the way. Got our x is getting in the way. Huh. All right, so let's do this one more time. Smooth this. I'm going to give it a, a light little bounce like that. There we go. And now we got our bounced animation done. It bounces a few times. We got our text popping up. And that's some real basic animation. Let's delete all of these nodes right here. We don't need those just yet. I'm going to plug this into the, mo the media out. And whatever is in the media out, this is going to go out to the the edit page. If nothing is plugged in, then nothing goes out. If I plug in the text, for example, and I go back to the edit page, then we're just going to have the text, no animation, nothing. If I plug in the transform, we're going to have the text with the animation, but nothing else. There you go, like that. All right, and uh, I'm just going to do this. This is what I was alluding to at first. If you're working in Fusion and you have your media out plugged in, for example, and you set it to viewer two, you can just continue working and whatever you do, like if I change the color here, or if I duplicated this and added a square, a rectangle, merged it over, made this pink. I can, you can continue working on, on different nodes. I can transform the circle, I can turn off the aspect ratio and squash it, for example, and everything will still be viewed as long as I have this, this viewer down here, right? So let's delete those and let's get our original blue back. It had a little bit more green, something like that, and delete this. Then we're back. And now on the, very quickly over here on the inspector, you'll see a few icons up here. You can, this is a pin icon. Like I can pin the transform, for example, and I can click another node and the transform will remain. So there's locking, you can lock a node so you can't make any changes accidentally. And you'll see a little lock icon on the node. This is for resetting the node. So it goes back to, so if you just dragged it in, and this is versions. This is color, by the way, you can change the color, but this is versions right here. Let's say I wanted to try something out. I could copy the node, paste it, and just, I can have one as a backup. I can make the changes here, or I could select version two, and I can, I don't know, exaggerate the animation some more. Let's bring them higher. Now the animation bounces higher than before. It does weird things. You can just switch back to version one and I'm back to version one and here is a version two. So you can make six different versions when you're messing around with different things. So that's just something to keep in mind. I barely use it, to be honest. Sometimes I just copy, paste, make a backup, do what I'm doing here. I don't like it. I swap it out, go back to the old one. I can delete these and go back to my original. All right. So that's it for the the basic animation. Let's make this look a little bit fancier before we wrap up this portion of the tutorial. So I'm going to turn on high quality, turn off proxy so I can just see how things are looking. I want to turn off control as well. You can do it by coming here and hitting show controls. So it doesn't show, let me see, select everything, show controls here, shows everything can turn that off. You can use Q to turn it on or off, right? So there you go, a few shortcuts. What I'm gonna do here is add a vignette. Let's change the size. And um, let's make the color, like it's a pick screen color. Let's grab this blue, then make it really dark. Dark version of the blue, like this. And then I'm gonna add a glow. Let's do dream glow. I think dream glow is pretty nice. It's going to mess with the I think the text is simply too white. So grab the text. I'm going to got this off white here that I like to use. Make that off white. Back to the glow. You might this glow came from from reactor. That's why I like to use it for for some things. 
do glow strength turn it down let's this spread um brightness you can mess with these settings and see what they do see what you like i think that's it for now um let's go to the edit page we can set our animation to loop and if you go to playback render car set it to smart you can now see this red line this will eventually make a cache that caches out to your system i have an application named everything search you can actually see these files being created in real time see these dvcc files you can hit play and once all the files are, are cached it's going to play the animation back smoothly so just rendering this out now this is done let's expand our viewer and we hit play i think this is a good place to stop for the very basic animation tutorial inside of fusion we went over nodes the way they flow inputs outputs the keyframe panel creating keyframes duplicating keyframes moving them around using the different tools and we use the splines to make a nice little animation so that wraps up part two of the fusion motion graphics series i'm going to be working on tutorial three asap Hopefully episode three doesn't take me as long as episode two. We'll see how that goes. But like I said, as we get close to the end of April, things should smooth out and I should be able to make these videos a whole lot faster. So let's see how that goes. See you guys soon in episode three.